In London this morning, President Obama says there will be no let up on Libya. Military and diplomatic pressures will continue, trying to force Muammar Gaddafi out of power. Last week, four Western reporters, including James Foley of the Global Post News Agency, were freed by the Gaddafi government after six weeks of detention and questioning. James Foley joins us this morning in the studio to talk about his ordeal. It's his first TV interview. Good to have you with us this morning. I appreciate it. Um, probably nice for you to be sitting in that chair, too, I would imagine. <laughs> it's nice to be back in the U.S. You, you got to Libya in March, as I understand it, reporting there. Obviously, this has been a really fluid situation as we've been following it in Libya. Beginning of April, April 5th, you get, you get close to the front lines there. Walk us through what happened. Well, we were uh, going out to report on what was actually happening on the front lines. It's very important in uh, this kind of war to, to see if what uh, the rebels are saying uh, they're doing is actually true. So it's important to go out there and confirm and to go back to report to our agencies. Um, that day, uh, we hitched a ride up to the front lines, and um, we were told that Qaddafi forces were very close. Uh, we decided to get off the road because we felt it was safer due to normally shelling coming from the road. Um, unfortunately, Qaddafi forces came right over the hill, and within seconds, we were under heavy fire. Um, the rest of the rebel vehicles retreated, and we were under heavy fire um, and immediately pinned down and had to surrender. And so then what happened next? Heavy fire, you surrender, and then there you are with Qaddafi forces. Um, there we are. Uh, I jumped up. Uh, tried to say we were journalists. Um, before I was captured, I saw um, our friend and colleague Anton Hamrell had been shot and was severely wounded. Um, then I was hit uh, several times with about an AK-47, punched and uh, dragged into a vehicle with my hands uh, tied behind my back. You don't know what ultimately happened to Anton, correct? Um, we believe due to the severity of his injuries he passed he passed away and uh, it was the most difficult thing was not being able to tell anybody for those 44 days we were in captivity what were those days like how did you fill your days in captivity you were questioned correct what did they ask you first thing was uh, accused of us of being a spy and um, we knew right away we had to stick to our story we had to absolutely be truthful um, who we were reporting for, uh, how many, even how many reports we had filed, uh, because we feared they might check those, uh, that information. And um, then it just became this very strange process of constantly being asked the same questions over and over again in some kind of court, did which it seem, we would go to. Did it seem like it was an organized process? Was there clear leadership there? It was organized in the sense that we knew we'd have a court date mm -hmm. in either five or 15 days, but... Uh, there appeared to be no logic behind it. It appeared to be a political court mm -hmm. um, in a regime that is trying to sow more fear, um, considering there's a true revolution going on. Did you have any contact at all with the outside, the outside world, essentially, during this time? Claire and I, who uh, is one of my colleagues who I was with for the initial 12 days, um, we prayed so hard. We just prayed to be able to talk to our parents, just prayed to talk to my mom, just to let her know I'm OK. Mm -hmm. I'm not being tortured. I'm being fed. And that was such a blessing the day that we were actually given a phone call. Uh, such a relief. Um, she filled me with so much encouragement. Friends from college, friends from uh, Teach for America, who I used to teach with, uh, were all over, the, all over the country, really, pulling for me and trying to get media attention. And my family was appearing on so many TV shows just to try to get attention to the State Department and diplomats that we were continually held and that was really the only contact I had until uh, the Hungarian ambassador came. Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, you were freed. Uh, Claire, as well, I know you're going to meet up with Claire later today. Yeah. Real quickly, I have to ask you, would you go back? Um, I think it's a very important story. I mean, right, what's going on right now is, 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 is fascinating on a journalistic level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here's a dictator who's been charged for four decades, and now there's a... Uh, there's an armed revolt of people who feel like they were forced to take up arms and won't accept the Qaddafis anymore and really believe that they can have some kind of democratic government. Mm -hmm. So that's a yes or a no? That's a yes? Uh, that's a yes eventually. Okay. All right. Well, keep us posted. James, really good to have you here. And Thank I know you your have. family's happy that you're, you're the one on TV this morning and not them. Thank you so much. Thanks again.